company was established in 1927, closed on Wednesday, February 28, citing serious business losses. The company has been operating in the Philippines for 97 years. It's probably the oldest company in the Philippines. Even giant businesses in the Philippines could not save this 97-year-old Philippine company. The company has given notice both to the Department of Labor and Employment and the affected employees at least 30 days before the effective date of termination. The effective date of the termination of all affected employees is the 29th of March 2024. Close to 500 employees will lose their job because of the sudden closure. It will also affect close to 5,000 sugarcane planters in Batangas and also less work for more than 10,000 sugarcane field workers. But the big question is how such a big company would survive for 97 years close suddenly if you're finding value in what i'm sharing i'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like your likes help boost the visibility of this video so that more people can discover it since i launched this channel i've never asked my viewers to subscribe or like my videos but i want to reach 100,000 subscribers before the end of this year so please help me reach 100,000 subscribers and thank you in advance for your support. Sugar refiner Central Azucarera Don Pedro in Batangas terminates all its employees saying increased sugar importation by the government in the past years hurt its operations. Thousands of sugarcane planters and field workers are affected. First Pacific Company Limited of Hong Kong Founded by Angelina, took a 34 stake in RHI in 2013 and raised it to majority stake two years later. Cadby was established by the forefathers of its current chairman, Pedro Rojas, who served for a long time as its president and CEO. The company had no choice but to close down Cadby since it was draining the parent firm's financial resources. RHI had a net loss of 797 million pesos in September 2022 and a loss of 938 million pesos in September 2021. In 2023, it shut down its milling operations and sold its sugarcane mill in Batangas, the Universal Rabina Corporation, which operates a sugar mill in nearby Balayan, Batangas. It produced and sold raw and refined sugar and related products to traders and industrial customers. Among its customers were multinational food and beverage companies like Coca-Cola Philippines and pharmaceutical companies such as United Laboratories Incorporated or Unilab. At one point, the company was the Philippines' second largest raw sugar manufacturer and its biggest producer of refined sugar. It planted and cultivated sugar cane and other farm products and managed and operated agricultural land. Its assets were valued at 2.7 billion pesos in September 2022. The company's closure is indicative of the sad state of the Philippines sugar industry. The Philippines used to be one of the world's major exporters of sugar and sugar was among the country's leading export products. When the Philippines was still an American colony, U.S. companies put up sugar mills and produced sugar for export. The U.S. and the Philippines had free trade relations, and the latter supplied a large part of America's sugar requirements. But these special relations ended in 1974. In 2005, the Philippines was the ninth largest sugar producer in the world and the second largest sugar producer among the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN. After Thailand, sugar became the most important agricultural export of the Philippines between the late 18th century and the mid 1970s because of two main reasons. One, foreign exchange earned and two, it was the basis of wealth accumulation of some Filipino elite at that time. 
to ensure the continuous growth and development of sugar industry under the Philippine Commonwealth government, the Philippine Sugar Administration was established in 1937 to oversee the industry annual production of sugar contributes about 69 billion pesos to the national GDP. In 1960, the Philippines sugar exports still counted for 11% of world trade, but this fell to 1% in 1990. For many years now, Philippine sugar production has not been able to keep up with population growth, promoting the government to regularly import sugar and keep prices stable. The breakup of large sugar farms due to the land reform program negatively affected the Philippine sugar industry. Sugar farming needs economies of scale to produce efficiently, according to agricultural experts, citing Thailand's success. The Philippines has also not been able to produce sugar competitively in the world market. Philippine raw sugar prices were 1.3 to 2.4 times higher than both world prices and Thailand's prices from 2011 to 2019. Thailand has managed to keep up with world productivity levels, whereas the Philippines has consistently suffered much lower productivity, hence much higher costs. The company was already facing difficulties in the past few years. In December 2021, Typhoon Odette destroyed a big part of the country's sugarcane farms in southern Luzon and western Visayas, where RHI operated. Catby's milling operations were hit by a big drop in supply of sugarcanes. In December 2022, RHI closed its sugar milling operations. In March 2023, RHI Chair Roja said, Catby's sugar refinery operations were dealt heavy blows by the government's move in February to import 440,000 metric tons of refined sugar on top of the 150,000 MT imported in crop year 2022 to 2023. It's been difficult for local sugar refineries to compete given the high prices of raw sugar, feedstock, and of outside fuel costs, which have increased significantly in recent years. These costs eroded the wide premium margin to entice local refineries to process and refine raw sugar. Capi's closure meant one less Philippine economy refining premium sugar with the loss of their refining capacity in Luzon. The said premium refined sugar would come from four companies in Negros Island and one in Bukidnon, 